So we are back with a brand new movie on what if Naruto was became future king of Camelot and adopted brother of Satan in DXD, movie but before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's begin the story. On a destroyed battlefield, corpses laid, many with weapons sticking out of their bodies. Some with spears, some with swords, some riddled with arrows, others were beheaded. In the center of it stood two knights. One clad in silver and red armor with a horned helmet. The other, a pitch black armor with a spiked helm with yellow covers over the eyes. A black and red waist cape was located on the black knight as well. In their hands sat both of their weapons. The silver knight had a large silver and red blade in their hand while the black knight had a black and red sword in theirs. They rushed each other, their armor clanking due to their movements. The slim dark blade clashed against its rival. The sound of grinding metal blasted their ears as both tried to forcefully overpower the other. They eventually pulled away before rushing again, their swords clashed again and again. Sparks flying until the silver knight eventually got the upper hand. The side of its sword clipped the black knight's helm, dazing the black knight. The black knight staggered away before it turned to its opponent and was forced to the ground due to a shoulder barge from their opponent. The silver knight stood above the other with their sword raised above their head. Before anything else could happen a loud alarm blared out across the battlefield. You've got to be fucking with me. I had that in the bag. The silver knight cursed in a female voice. A low chuckle could be heard from her opponent. I'll admit. I was saved by the bell. The black knight said as the area around them faded away revealing that they were in a field of flowers. You're damn right you were. The silver knight snarled as she stomped her foot on the ground. The black knight's armor faded away revealing a young teen of 17 years old with bright blonde hair that seemed to pale at the tips. Bright blue eyes that showed his happiness at his partner's anger. He was wearing an orange tank top under a black jacket and gray jeans with black Nike shoes. Looking over at the silver knight, he saw he punching the ground in frustration as her armor disappeared in a bright red light. Long golden hair tied into a ponytail and bright green eyes were the things that first caught his attention when they met. A red jacket left unzipped revealing a white and blue tank top and booty shorts with a pair of brown boots. Walking over to her, the male offered his hand to the woman took it without a second's hesitation. A brief memory flashing within her mind. Flashback, she was chained to a wall. A needle dug into her arm as she heard the muffled words of other people. Her thoughts remained on escaping and getting revenge against the guys who dared to experiment on her. The pain from the drugs that had been constantly forced into her body forced her to black out though. After darkness consumed her, she was quickly awoken by the blaring of an alarm. Not only that, but she found herself on the ground, her blade laid on the ground in front of her. After her vision came back to her, she looked upwards only to stare into the blue eyes of her savior his pitch black sword that swallowed light with blood red markings in his off hand. He offered her his hand and a small smile came to the girl's face as her savior helped her out of her current prison. Flashback end, Mordred. The black knight called as the silver knight, Mordred was forcefully snapped out of her thoughts. What's up Naruto? She asked as the other blonde shook his head. I asked if you'd be fine looking after Milikas today, Naruto said as Mordred nodded her head. Of course. The little brat and I will be fine. She said as she clasped her hands behind her head. The question is. Dot are you ready? She asked as Naruto nodded. That spar helped me work out any form of anger I might have before coming face to face with Riser. Naruto said as Mordred smiled and patted him on the back. It seemed to have done wonders for you as well. Naruto said calmly as Mordred laughed. Not gonna lie. I've been feeling a bit on the offside lately. So working out some steam like this was just perfect. She said before she remembered something important. Thanks for that by the way, she said quietly, gaining Naruto's attention. There's nothing to thank me for. I wanted the both of us at our strongest and besides, I thought I'd give you an advantage by letting you fight somewhere you're familiar with. The Battle of Camelon just happened to be the first thing that came to mind. He stated calmly as a large black circle appeared below them. The two were then enveloped by a dark red almost black light before they found themselves outside a large mansion. The two entered the mansion with a smile on their faces. So you sure that you're all right with looking after Milikas? Naruto asked as he and Mordred stopped outside their rooms. Yeah don't worry about it. You go do your thing in Milikas and I will be waiting for Uncle Naruto to return. She said teasingly as a smile appeared on Naruto's face. All right then. I'll see ya afterwards, he said before he entered his room, shutting the door behind him. Mordred stayed where she was for a bit longer, her eyes lingering on the door before she entered her own room. With Naruto. The two-toned blonde was currently sitting on his bed, his thoughts occupying his current family. A caring mother, a strict elder sister, 
a overprotective big brother, an otaku for a sister and his dimwit of a father. Don't get him wrong, he loved his family with every fiber of his being but his father didn't have the smartest ideas sometimes. Flashback. Why did she react the way she did? Ziotikus Grammary, Naruto's adoptive father, said with a groan as he remembered his daughter's reaction. We've basically sold away her happiness. We're forcing her to marry someone she doesn't want. Of course she would react that way. His wife, Venelana said as she was brushing her hair. Now, I am going to speak with Lady and Lord Phoenix about the engagement. Naruto is in the library doing some studying and I expect you to leave him be for now. She continued, giving her husband a pointed look in the mirror she was using. S sure thing. Ziotikus said, sweating lightly, after Venelana had finished getting ready for her meeting, she gave her husband a quick peck on the cheek before she vanished. When Ziotikus was sure that she was gone, he ran to the library in a hurry. Already having devised a brilliant plan in his mind. After entering the library, he quickly looked around before he saw the 13 year old Naruto sitting at a desk reading up on the history of devils. Naruto, my boy, how's my new addition to the family? Ziotikus asked as he quickly walked over to the boy who placed his book down. I am doing well, father, Naruto said, having already been told by Venelana to freely address them as mother and father. Say, Naruto, I know you're studying and all, but let's say you come with me for a quick sec. Ziotikus said with a goofy grin as Naruto raised a brow before he started connecting the dots. Father I believe this to be a very terrible idea, Naruto said quickly before Ziotikus grabbed him by the hand and dragged him out of the library. Trust me son, this is gonna be great, he said happily as Naruto shook his head as he was being led to the family room. Great for entertainment perhaps, Naruto thought to himself before he noticed that they had arrived, looking around. Naruto quickly found a chair for himself to sit in before he noticed Ziotikus calling someone. After taking his seat, he dug his nose into his book and heard as his father was being quickly chewed out. Not listen honey. I promise you that it's not Riser you're meeting, it's someone you'll come to like very quickly, he assured the person on the over line before it was cut. Naruto sighed as he watched the giddy smile on his father's face grew once the doors to the room opened. Glancing at the door, he saw a girl with bright red hair and bluish green eyes wearing a red dress. She glanced at Naruto who turned his attention back to his book before the girl turned to her father. Well what is it? She asked as Naruto could already see how this would play out. Well Rias, your mother and I talked about what we had done to you, forcing you into the contract with Riser and we felt bad. Now your mother wanted to hold off on you two meeting. Ziotikus said pausing to gauge his only daughter's reaction. For a very good reason, Naruto thought to himself. The young red head was staring at the ground. Her face hidden from view but if one looked carefully, they would notice the shaking of her shoulders. Allow me to introduce your younger brother Naruto, Ziotikus announced as the blonde bowed his head. So not only have you signed away my right to marry someone, but you've gone and replaced me as well. Rias said quietly as Naruto stood to his feet and left the room, carefully as to not draw attention to himself. Flashback end, after he left the room, he remembered hearing Rias screaming at their father and the sounds of him panicking when she started firing off some magic spells she knew. It had taken a while for Naruto and her to get onto a tolerable state, but they eventually found themselves enjoying the company of one another. Getting off of his bed, Naruto opened his door to find a grown woman with silver hair dressed in a maid outfit standing in front of his door. Hello Grafia Oni-san. He greeted, getting a smile from the stoic maid. Grafia Lucifuge, the current wife of Lucifer and Naruto's sister-in-law. When Naruto was brought into the family, she was another one who he had to work on developing a better relationship with. Grafia saw him as another member of the family and served him like a servant with their master. It wasn't until later that she would stop on Naruto's behalf and treat him like a sibling. You could say that while Sears X fawned over both of his siblings, he favored Rias a bit more than Naruto. Not that he minded, in fact it's because of that, that Naruto's relationship grew to the point it was at now. Are you ready? She asked as Naruto sighed. Don't be surprised if I try to hack off a limb or two. Naruto warned her as he stood next to her. I'll step in before anything major happens, she said before the two left in a blue magic circle. Kuo Japan. Kuo Academy or Club. The two appeared within an old worn down building. Looking around, Naruto smiled lightly at the fact the room looked more westernized than he thought it would have. Of course, his actions were currently throwing the occupants of the room on edge. And here I thought you would have made this place fit in more with your little habit he said as he turned to stare eye to eye with a red-haired teen who sat behind a large oak desk. The owner of the red hair was beautiful young woman with white skin, blue eyes with a figure most men saw as their dream women's figure. On her face though was a slight scowl which gave her a fiercer look than usual. What's gotten you in a foul mood? 
Naruto asked sarcastically as he noticed movement on his right. Turning to the movement, he was greeted by a sight of someone who annoyed him to no end. Issei Hayudo. Issei is a high school student of average height with short spiky brown hair, with two short locks of hair behind his head, and light brown eyes. Though what annoys Naruto about this teen was his perversion. While Naruto can admire his desire and will, he also finds the same features about the boy to be annoying. Such as the brat's constant screaming of his dream of becoming the harem king. What the hell are you doing here asshole? He asked, glaring at Naruto who had to restrain from impaling the fool. Issei. The redhead called, getting the boy's attention. Try not to piss off my brother more than you usually do. She warned as the brown-haired boy adopted a look of utter terror. B brother? He asked in fear as Naruto let out a small smile. Allow me to properly introduce myself to your pawn and Bishop Rias. Naruto said as he threw a pointed look to the red-haired girl. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Otherwise called Naruto Gremory, Rias adopted younger brother. He introduced with a small flick to Issei's forehead before a blonde-haired girl in a nun's outfit walked up to him. It's nice to meet you. My name is Asia Argento, she said as Naruto smiled and pet the girl's head. Aren't you just precious? Why can't you have more pieces like her Nei-chan? Naruto asked as Rias gained a twitching. I didn't invite you here to listen to you nitpick over the people I bring into my peerage Naruto. Rias said with a very strained voice as Naruto smiled. You see, Naruto loved to tease his sister by judging those who she reincarnates using her evil pieces. The evil pieces were created the current Beelzebub, Ajuka, in order to replenish the number of devils that were lost in an event called the Great War. Though, even after being taught about these items, Naruto himself rejected the idea of using the evil pieces and never got a set of his own, stating that he would never use those pieces to reincarnate people into his own followers and would rather earn them for himself. She has a point there Naruto. No need for you to worry about the small details. A lovely voice that brought a large blush to the face of the pervert in the room stated as Naruto's eyes trailed off to stare at the person now behind Rias. What are you doing here mage of flowers? Naruto asked as the others turned to see a woman with her face covered by a white hood. A white robe covered her body, yet the robe parted at her shoulders and covered everything down past her biceps. This was not the only place it parted, it parted again around her legs to show that she was wearing black pants with brown boots. Her chest was open to the world, covered by a black shirt that left a respectable amount of her chest open to the world. I just thought I would come and see how my investment is doing. The mage of flowers said as she took off her hood, revealing her silver hair and purple eyes before she walked over to the back of the two-toned blonde and draped herself over his back lightly holding him as her chin rested on his shoulder. Naruto rolled his eyes at her actions before he turned his attention to his sister, the silver-haired mage still holding him him. All right then. How much longer till the jackass shows himself? Naruto asked before he noticed the temperature of the room increase. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. Naruto muttered under his breath as he turned around to gaze at a golden magic circle that appeared. Small wisps of flames spewed forth from the circle as another blonde-haired male walked into the room. The man appeared to be in his early twenties with blonde hair about the same length as Naruto's own with eyes a darker blue than Naruto's own. His outfit consists of a burgundy blazer with gold embroidery on the right with matching pants and black dress shoes. Underneath his open blazer is a white dress shirt that is not fully buttoned, giving a slight view to his chest. It's been a while since I have stepped foot into the human world. A voice seeped in arrogance stated as Naruto had to resist the urge to growl. A large broadsword made completely of black and red energy roared to life in his hands before a quick swing snuffed out the life of the flames. We don't want you burning this place to the ground riser. So cool it for once. Naruto growled as his sister's fiancé walked over to stare eye to eye with him. Riser however ignored Naruto and turned to Grafia, giving a bow of respect to the one revered as the strongest female devil. He spoke in a sickly sweet tone. It's an honor to have you oversee this meeting Grafia-sama but please, do try and keep this mud on a leash. He said, referring to Naruto, whose eyes flashed a sinister gold before they returned to their normal blue. It is nice to see you as well Riser sama but I think you should resist from making any remarks that would force Naruto-sama's hand. Grafia warned as her eyes went to her brother who was glaring at the elder blonde while the woman draped over his back giggled. Time skip, end of meeting. Rias plopped down in her seat in frustration, the meeting went over well but she knew that she would have to work harder now to get out of her marriage. It didn't help when Issei tried to attack Riser only to be stopped by a member of his peerage. She turned to see her brother leaning against the wall with his eyes closed, the one he calls Mage of Flowers sitting next to him on a small cushioned wooden stool. I wanted to ask you something Mage of Flowers, Rias stated getting the silver-haired woman's attention. What is it Rias-san? She asked as her investment sister stood from her chair. 
At first glance, with the 10 days we were given for training, do you think my peerage could beat Riser? Rias asked, wondering what this person, someone who seems to be closer to her brother, may think. At first glance, I would have to say that experience may be the deciding factor of this little fight. She answered, one of her hands, raised to her chin as Naruto pushed off the wall. Oh it seems that we must be leaving, she said as she stood to her feet and dusted herself off. My final question. Who are you? Rias asked as a black circle appeared around Naruto and her target of interest. Naruto calls me Mage of Flowers, but that's just my title, I'd rather you call me Merlin. The now named Merlin said as she waved goodbye to those within the room as both her and Naruto were teleported out of the room in a dark red flash. Merlin? Rias thought to herself, before writing it off as just a coincidence. My brother's sword has that of a holy aura, and he has a mage named Merlin working with him. It has to be a coincidence. Rias ended her train of thoughts. Her brother having a holy sword and working with someone named Merlin. If someone came up to her and said her brother was the reincarnation of King Arthur or something, she laugh in their face before walking off. If only she knew of how close to the truth that would be. Naruto awoke to the quiet song being played on his phone. Sitting up and dismissing the song, he got out of bed and turned his light on, turning the rather darkly lit room bright. Grabbing some items that sat on a desk next to his bed, he summoned a pitch black sword with red markings lining the center of the blade. Raising it to his face, he caught a glimpse of himself in the sword. Pale blonde hair, sickly yellow eyes and red vein markings were what greeted him. Sitting down at the edge of his bed, he started his routine of cleaning the sword. Though he was interrupted when Merlin reached around and took hold of his body. Come back to bed. I'm still sleepy, she moaned as she tried to pull him back down. Chucking his rag onto the desk, his sword vanished in a flash as grabbed the side of his neck. Pulling Merlin off his body, he stood to his feet and looked at the mirror he kept on his desk. Lifting it up, he wasn't surprised to see more of his hair had paled alongside his skin. What caught his attention the most was the red veins he could barely see on the side of his jaw. The more I use that, dot the more these changes make themselves known, he thought to himself as he moved to turn the light off. Just as he did, the door to his room opened showing Grafia, her stoic face lit up with a small smile as she found him at the door. Well, it's good to see you are awake Naruto-sama. I do believe you're meant to be having breakfast with your family shortly, she said as Naruto looked at the clock on the wall in front of his bed. Didn't realize I slept in, he muttered as he looked towards Grafia. Tell the others I'll be down shortly just going to get dressed. With a bow, his brother's wife took her leave. Shutting the door, he made his way to his closet and opened it. Throwing on a plain white shirt. Looking back to his bed, he found Merlin had managed to go back to sleep despite the lights being on. A serene smile on her face. Walking over, Naruto sat down at the edge of his bed and pushed some strands of hair out of her face. Admiring the softness of the silver locks for a few seconds, he leaned down and gave her a quick kiss before he left the room. Once he was gone, Merlin opened her eyes and stared at the door, her smile widening before she rolled over. Sleep now. Tease him later. Her plans for the day sorted, she quickly got to the first part of her plan, sleep. Dining room. Walking into the dining room, Naruto quickly took his seat next to Venelana and Mordred, across from Rias. Good morning Naruto, he heard his father call. Nodding his head with closed eyes, he leaned back into his chair with a sigh as Grafia placed a tray of bacon and eggs in front of him. You still tired blondie? He heard Mordred ask as Naruto opened his eyes, his gaze meeting his sister's. Where are you taking you peerage to train? He asked, catching Rias off guard. I found a small cottage near uninhabited mountain that I could use as a base for training. I'll be staying there for the ten days. Pondering his sister's words, he glanced at Mordred before his attention was set back on Rias. I'll be joining you for those ten days. Mordred as well, he announced. Standing to her feet, Rias was quick to shoot down his interference. There is no reason for you to get involved with my problems Naruto. Hearing his name being said, he realized his sister was serious. Rias, you're going to need everyone being entirely serious in this fight. I don't care if you think you can handle this yourself, but I swear that if you even think you have a chance as you are now, you're only going to suffer a degrading defeat. Biting her tongue, Rias took in a large breath as she thought on her brother's words. You think you could help us? She asked as Naruto looked down at his food. I can do as much as I can, but you're going to have to trust me. The calmness in his words calmed her slightly, be even then, she still held some doubt. The rest of breakfast was eaten in silence before Naruto and Mordred left. The two packed their bags for a couple days away. Once they were done, Merlin made herself known by grabbing Naruto once more. Can you find them? He asked. 
feeling her rub her chin into the top of his head with her moaning slightly. Naruto watched as a magic circle appeared in front of him. A ripple appeared in the center before it disappeared. In front of him was a picture of the old cottage. Closing his eyes, Naruto, Mordred and Merlin all vanished. Appearing outside the cottage, Naruto watched as his sister's queen, Akano Himejima, walked outside to meet him. What are you doing here Naruto-sama? she asked as Naruto smirked. I'm here to help with training, I don't sense my sister here, he pointed out as he looked around. No, our new member Issei is unable to use transportation portals properly, as such Bucko is making him hike here in order to build his body. Shaking his head in exasperation, Naruto glanced at Merlin who nodded her head and sat down. Get the others out here, Naruto ordered as Akano nodded. Minutes later, she returned with the Kiba, Asia and Kaneko. The group stood near Naruto who looked at Mordred. Both nodded before Naruto turned his attention to Merlin, who was sitting on the ground, a staff leaning on her shoulder as her eyes remained closed. Do it now. Mage of Flowers, he ordered calmly as said mage opened her eyes. Allow me to regale you with the king's tale. She started slowly as Rhea's peerage noticed a ripple appeared below them. From the inner seas, from the platform of my watchtower, to the very edges of the world, my voice shall be heard. I pray all of your stories are filled with blessings and let those who side with you pass freely. She continued to chant as the others watched the world change around them. This is my forever sealed utopia, my garden of Avalon. Finishing her chant, the others found themselves standing on a concrete floor. Hearing dripping, they walked to the edge of the floor they stood on to gaze into an endless unknown. Looking down, they were surprised to see flowers had bloomed on the ground below. What? Is this? Kaneko asked as she stared at the sudden change of scenery. Merlin's strongest spell. She has created a world and placed it on top of the one outside. Like placing a layer over something. Here, our power is constantly increased for every second we are here. And any wound received is healed up. Mordred explained as she took a step towards the edge of the platform. Walking off the edge, she plummeted to the flowers below, twisting at the end, her feet crashed into the ground. Flowers floating up as her armor formed around her, following after her, Naruto's armor formed midway through the fall. When he hit the ground, the flowers around him darkened, as if corrupted by his presence. The others watched from above as the two knights drew their weapons and charged, the strength of their blows surprising those watching. Flowers having been blown around the two, both swords clashing against each other, sending sparks out. Pushing the other back, both knights circled each other before engaging each other once more. With the spectators above, Merlin sat at the edge of her platform. Her legs crossed as she held a staff against her shoulder. Gazing down she watched as the two below moved back before they both assumed a stance. Naruto holding his sword at his waist, Mordred raising hers above her head. What are they doing? Kiba asked as power gathered around the two. Showing you their strength. Merlin answered as she noticed a tear in the world appear behind them. Walking through, Merlin saw Rias and Issei staring at the change of the area in confusion and awe. The two were drawn to the growing power below, both hesitantly gazing over the edge. Clarent. Blood Arthur. Mordred called as she swung down. A beam of bright red energy traveling towards Naruto who returned in kind. Morgan. Calling the name of his attack, he swung upwards, releasing his own beam of black, purple and red energy. The two meeting in the center before clashing for dominance. The others stared in shock as the two attacks exploded, blowing the two fighters away. Mordred bouncing across the ground with Naruto hitting the pillar of the floating tower. Pulling himself out, he charged Mordred, the silver armored knight doing the same. Both clashing against each other without fail. Ignoring the drain their attacks each held, they continued to fight. With the sounds of their fighting in the background, Merlin turned towards the others, an all-knowing smile on her face. Now that you've seen how strong Naruto has become while training, what will you do Issei-kun? She asked as the brunette watched the pale blonde continue to assault his armored ally. Just. Dot how much? He wondered as Merlin giggled. He had quite the pedigree. Though to him, his ancestors are not what matters. She calmly started as she conjured a sword in her hand. His pedigree? Issei asked as she nodded, standing to her feet. To come from the sister of the king who once wielded the holy sword. Dot yet to have become as darkened as he is due to the world's negativity. I wonder, if you obtained Excalibur. Dot how strong would you become? She asked before turning to gaze at the others. While those two continued to train with each other, I'll get us started on our training. Asia chan Riasheim, Akano-chan, I'll be teaching you control on your magic. She started, getting a nod from the three girls in mention. Kiba-san, Kaneko-chan, can you please try and help Issei-kun? She asked, getting a nod from the younger girl. If this place heals us, 
I'm allowed to hurt him right? Kaneko asked, getting a nod from the elder woman. Wait what? Issei asked panicked as a Kaneko cracked her knuckles. Get ready for training you filthy perv, she warned getting a laugh from the others. Three days later, it had been three days since the group decided to train together, well, since Naruto forced himself into the training trip and after battling Mordred for a full day, he decided to take a rest. Watching the others, he took out a small notebook and a pencil. Leaning against one of the trees, Merlin's Garden of Avalon having faded the night before due to the cost of the spell, he started lightly dragging his pencil across the paper. Hearing footsteps approach, he tore himself away from his drawing to see Issei in front of him. The pervert. Naruto drawled out as his eyes narrowed. Hey senpei, how's it going? Issei asked with a nervous chuckle. Was better. But since you're here, I guess it's worse. Naruto snarled as the brunette raised his hands in defense. Could I sit down with you? Kiba said to take a break, and honestly, I kinda want to know you better. Issei admitted as Naruto raised a brow. Closing his eyes, Naruto gestured for the brown-haired boy to join him. Sitting down, Issei let out a sigh of relief as he laid back against the tree. So, Merlin mentioned something about your ancestors. Issei started, Naruto glancing at the team next to him. What about them? He asked as Issei laughed. I just found it funny when she brought them up then basically said you didn't care, he continued, closing his eyes slightly. What they did died with them. I simply carry relics from their time, Naruto explained calmly. I wish I could have that attitude, to simply not care about things. Issei moaned as Naruto reached to his side. What do you mean? He asked, pulling a can out from a cooler he had next to him. Opening it, he stared at it for a second before holding it out to the pervert. Issei, taking it with gratitude, gave his answer to the blonde. I'm labeled a huge pervert. And, rightfully so. But, I just wish that people could look past that and see me for me, ya you know? He asked taking a sip as Naruto grabbed another can for himself. Issei. I'm one of the people who think nothing better of you. I expect nothing better of you. He started, ignoring a small growl from his resting partner. But I guess because I have such low expectations for you. That you can surprise me easier. Naruto admitted as his gaze turned to the sky. Surprise you? Issei asked as Naruto nodded. I've grown up the way I have with my mother watching out for me. Showing me how to look out for myself. I've had Merlin teaching me on how to be a better warrior, to be a king. I have Mordred to constantly try and better myself with in order to get stronger. Dot yet here you are. Naruto paused to take a sip of his drink. A brand new reincarnated devil with the boosted gear. No Merlin. No Mordred. Only my sister and her peerage to help you, he continued before his speech was interrupted. I may only have Bucko and the others, but they are all I need. They believe in me, and it's because of them I want to get stronger. To not be a burden? Naruto asked. Silence greeted him, but Naruto could tell he was right. Why did you decide to challenge Riser the way you did? Naruto asked as Issei sighed. I guess it was because of the way he treated Bucho and the others. Dachi wasn't happy to be near him, yet he went and forced himself near her. Dot and how he treated his peerage. Issei explained, gritting his teeth in anger. Wouldn't you be doing the same thing? An all female peerage at your beck and call? To serve your every need? Naruto asked as Issei stood to his feet and glared at him. Not in a lifetime. Yes I want to be a harem king. Dot but not like that jackass. Issei said fiercely, a slight smirk appearing on Naruto's face. What about my sister? What are your thoughts on how he acted towards her? He pushed, causing Issei to growl. When I saw what he did, I wanted nothing more than to give him a piece of my mind, to simply kick his ass and make him pay for acting that way to her. Listening to the words said, Naruto stood to his feet after placing his can down. Facing Issei, he raised a fist towards him, a small smile on his face. And just like that, Dot you surprised me, what? Issei asked confused. To be completely honest, if you had even thought of acting like Riser, I would have killed you right here and now. Rias and the others can't stop me, and you know that. Naruto started as Issei gulped, realizing how close to death's door he was. Keep that dedication close to you perv. It's the only thing I like about you. Naruto finished as Issei looked at the outstretched limb. You're an asshole. Don't you know that right? Issei asked as he bumped fists with the one in front of him. I have been told. Walking away from him, Naruto left Issei with some parting words. If you wish to get stronger, dedicate your reasoning to protect those you truly care about. Something like revenge only gets you so far. Watching him walk away, Issei's mind dwelled on the words spoken before a look of determination crossed his face. I'll get stronger for Bucko, and everyone sake, 
Dot and maybe I'll be rewarded afterwards. Letting out perverted giggles, Issei's mind wandered as Naruto left the clearing. The next day, as everyone was gathered for breakfast, Naruto, leaning against a wall, found Merlin nowhere in sight. No doubt slacking off somewhere, he thought as he noticed Issei walk up to him. Senpei, please train with me, he exclaimed, causing Naruto to close his eyes. Not gonna happen. Hitting the ground, Issei quickly got over his shock and grabbed Naruto, glaring directly into his eyes. Why the hell not? He questioned as Naruto grabbed one of his wrists and squeezed. Being forced to let go, Issei instantly tried to support his arm only to get sucker punched by Naruto. Hitting the ground roughly, he laid there, unmoving. If a single punch did that to you, what makes you think you can handle training with me? Naruto asked, pushing off the wall and walking past the groaning team. Feeling a tug on his leg, he let out an irritated sigh and turned around only for Issei to sock him in the face with all his might. Stumbling back, Naruto hit the wall and slid down it. Rias went to intervene, only to be held in place by Mordred, the green-eyed blonde's eyes firmly locked on the situation. If a punch from me can do that to you, then maybe I don't need to train with you. Issei taunted as Naruto wiped some blood from his lip and stood to his face. Staring the pervert down, Naruto smiled again, a small chuckle leaving his mouth. 20 minutes, outside. Don't be late, he simply said, leaving the small cottage as silence filled the room. 15 minutes later, walking out, Issei found Naruto waiting for him in a clearing. The blonde had his armored gauntlets on, staring the teen in front of him down. Two points already today Issei. Keep this up and I might actually like you. Naruto joked as the boosted gear formed on Issei's arm. You already know what I want senpei. Issei pushed as Naruto raised one armored fist to his cheek and the other went to his side. I'm not going to hold back Issei. Naruto calmly warned as the pervert scoffed. I've seen your abilities with your sword. I should be able to handle you without it. Issei proudly admitted as Naruto rolled his eyes. The two stood still, both waiting for the other before Issei charged. Getting tired of waiting, he threw his strongest right hook that Naruto calmly slapped to the side. Grabbing Issei's wrist, Naruto pushed towards the ground. Ducking, his shoulders met Issei's ribs as his other hand grabbed Issei's leg. Standing up and falling back, Naruto dropped Issei harshly onto the ground. Quick and effective, that was the style Naruto decided to go with. Getting to his feet, Naruto looked back to see Issei slowly getting to his feet, staggered by the wrestling move used. Running forward, Naruto grabbed a fist aimed for his fist and pulled Issei into his outstretched arm. His bicep meeting Issei's throat in a vicious clothesline that dropped him. Crouching down, Naruto stared down and the groaning pervert before sighing. Maybe I should have held back, he thought to himself, before finding himself pinned under Issei, who used his position on the ground to tackle him to the ground. Watching as a fist came towards him, Naruto moved his head to the side only to receive a cross from the brunette. Raising his head, Issei quickly backed off, making Naruto miss his headbutt before Issei's arm wrapped around Naruto's neck. Pulling the blonde to his feet, Issei quickly fell back down, delivering a quick DDT that stunned Naruto. Staggering to his feet, Naruto ducked under a punch from Issei before swinging a foot out, catching the teen's chin. The brunette dropped but quickly got to his feet and rushed in to try and get an easy hit in while Naruto was distracted. Turning his head slightly and catching the punch, Naruto pulled Issei forward, a black aura forming around his other fist which collided with Issei's gut. Throwing his weight forward, Issei was sent hurtling, a black and red line being made from the attack. Crashing into a couple of trees, knocking them down, he finally stopped upon colliding with the fourth tree. Walking up to the groaning teen, Naruto grabbed him by the collar and lifted him high into the air. Rule number one of fighting. Because a fighter has shown proficiency with a single item, don't assume that's all they know. Never underestimate your opponent. Naruto lectured before he let Issei go. Hitting the ground, Issei stared at Naruto who quickly offered him a hand. Taking the gesture, Issei was pulled to his feet and dusted off slightly. Did you decide on why you want to get stronger? Naruto asked as he started walking back. For Bukau's sake, dot for everyone else's sake, Issei declared as Naruto smiled. Smart kid. Rough around the edges but smart nonetheless. Issei looked in shock at the compliment given. Running forward, he gave Naruto a pat on the back and a smile, running back to the others while Naruto stopped in his tracks. Something the matter? Turning to the voice, Naruto was greeted by Merlin, who instantly latched onto him. He has potential. Dot but unfortunately, I don't think that even with my help, that Rias and the others will win. He admitted, Merlin nodding her head in agreement. That's how the world works. 
It presents those who strive their hardest for things they want, with insurmountable odds. Dot and they either fail and break. Or fail and get stronger from it. Chuckling at his companion's words, Naruto reached back, gently grabbing her legs and lifting her onto his back. Should you really be exerting yourself? She asked with a smile as Naruto looked towards the cottage to see Issei being scolded by Rias. If that kid continues to do something like this, then I can afford to push myself a little bit as well. I have to admit, his punches do have some weight to them. He said, remembering some of the hits that actually caused some damage to him. Onwards my trusty steed, Merlin called as she pointed forward, Naruto glancing up to her with a playful glare. Shouldn't the king be the one giving orders? He asked. When the king rises to the challenge of his people, then his advisor must step in and take over. Besides, it's not like you dislike having me on top. She playfully said as Naruto started walking forward, a small blush appearing on his face. Day of the raiding match, it was the big day for Rias. Her one chance at getting freedom by her own power. No matter how she previously tried the contract was never broken, and now she couldn't help but smile at her chances today. The final day of training was spent more on relaxing than anything. Ease their sore muscles. When she questioned Naruto, he had said to them before leaving that they had improved. Hearing those words from his mother simply added to her happiness. Her brother was one of the strongest reincarnated devils of their age group, yet he never stopped training. She had seen the results as he and Mordred battled to the point of both being bloody, so to hear him praise her group made her happy. Yo ne chan. Naruto greeted, knocking her out of her thoughts. Why are you here? She asked expecting him to be out in the human world. Did you expect me to miss my sister's big day with her first ever raiding game? Naruto sarcastically replied, receiving a dry look from Rias. Well, I have to say, thank you for helping Issei during those days of training. Rias started awkwardly, twirling a lock of her red hair. Don't worry about it, that kid has some talent. Naruto waved off her thanks, though managed to draw her curiosity as well. Talent? She asked. Managing to survive against me when I was trying to hurt him, Naruto answered truthfully. What? She asked, horrified at the prospect of Issei being too injured to compete. Issei wanted me to attack him with everything I had, I will admit I held back, but not a lot. Keep an eye on him. He may surprise you. Naruto advised her as he started to walk away. Mordred and I will be watching to see the results of this fight. Try and make it entertaining. With those words, Naruto walked away, his mocking tone annoying Rias. Though a smile came across her face when she thought back on his words, so focuses on his own goals, Naruto never realized the amount of people who wanted to get close to him at school. Pushing them away without a second thought, yet Issei managed to impress him within 10 days. She would admit that she never approached him at school due to knowing how he interacted with others. Rias Sama, the rating game will be starting soon, her sister in law. Grafia said as she approached the red head. Closing her eyes to gather her thoughts as her peerage funneled into the room, Rias soon opened them, a cocky grin forming across her face as she was nearing the day she longed for. The day she was finally free of Riser for good. Outside the raiding game, Naruto and Mordred were spectating the fight in a small booth with Venelana standing next to them. How did the training go? She asked, placing a hand on Naruto's head and messing up his hair. Naruto just closed his eyes with his shoulders sagging slightly. A sign of him calming down instead of being constantly tense. It went well. Merlin said that Rias and Akano improved with their magic, if only slightly. Meanwhile, Issei improved physically, being able to take a few hits from myself. I left Kiba and Kaneko to their own devices, knowing those two would be able to handle themselves. Naruto explained, enjoying Venelena's hand combing through his hair. And what of the priest girl? She asked, noticing that he missed one. A pure and honest soul. Dot not one so easily corrupted by their demonic nature. He started calmly, a frown appearing. But because of that, she decided against learning anything offensive from Merlin. Opting only to be taught some barriers in order to protect herself. A defensive healer. Mordred summarized as Naruto nodded. Their chances? Venelana asked, staring at the green-eyed blonde who turned her attention towards her. The moment Red loses her knight, queen and rook, it's checkmate. Hearing Mordred's words, Naruto agreed in his mind, his eyes opening long enough to stare at the screen. Hey Blondie what are we doing just watching? Mordred asked, drawing Naruto's attention, his eyes gaining an amber glint. Supporting a one-sided battle and gathering information. With this, we should be able to find a counter to Riser. He explained, an arrogant smile appearing on his face. For now, we watch and wait. Then when the time is right, we strike. Hearing those words, Mordred sat down against the wall of the booth her gaze being directed towards the battle. Naruto, 
followed her example, his attention turning to the fight as his armor started forming. When we battle Rise or Phoenix, dot you better not let me down, Naruto thought to himself as a small crown formed on his head, small black horns appearing from his skull. The raiding battle proceeds as it does in canon, as you predicted Mordred. Checkmate. Naruto calmly stated as Rias surrendered the fight, preventing Issei from being gravely injured by Riser. Experience was the biggest deciding factor here. While Rias and her peerage had the heart to win, Riser had the mindset. And with all his previous battles, Rias crumbled. Venelana voiced as her attention turned towards her armor clad son. Mordred. We're leaving. Naruto announced as he turned and walked past Venelana, the clanking of his armor being the only sound heard as Mordred got up to her feet. I'll have Merlin watch over Rias' peerage while you two are gone. Venelana said as Naruto stopped at the door. Issei will do something stupid no doubt, have her try and hold him back until the wedding, he may be useful that day, Naruto stated mockingly as he left. He's eager. Mordred mentioned, surprised by how quickly he left the two women. After that battle with Riser, I'm not surprised, he's no doubt thought of a way to crush Riser without hesitation. Venelana said as her violet eyes closed with a motherly smile appearing on her face. I'm happy to see that he cares for his sister enough. Hearing the last part of what was said, Mordred raised a brow. What do you mean? She asked. How do you think I plan on having the marriage nulled? Venelana countered as Mordred's eyes narrowed. Naruto beating Riser into the ground. She asked, unsure of where Venelana was going with her thought process. The Fenix family is smarter than that. While Riser would take the challenge, Lady and Lord Fenix would not agree to it. There's nothing to gain. Venelana explained as her gaze shifted to the still confused blonde. Where are you going with this? Mordred asked, still not seeing the end goal. If this was to work, then it has to be worth the loss of the marriage between Fenix and Gramary. She said raising a hand up. Upon his declaration of challenge, Naruto's heritage will be revealed. The last male descendant of Artoria Pendragon, he who is capable of wielding the holy sword Excalibur, despite being a devil. Who wouldn't jump at the thought of that person being added to their own families? Venelana asked as a glare appeared on Mordred's face. You're going to reveal who he really is, don't you realize the problems that come with that? Mordred retorted, confused at Venelana's plan. I am aware. But think of it from a devil's perspective. He wields the holy sword, corrupted as it may be. He is of Pendragon blood as well. That alone draws the greed of a devil to obtain him. As such, I will be offering his hand in marriage to the youngest of the Fenix. Venelana finished her explanation as Mordred could only stare in shock. You're gonna offer him up in a marriage contract, on the off chance that he loses, like he's some kind of pawn? Mordred asked as Venelana nodded. To have one of Arthur's descendants in your family, wielding the Excalibur for your family's name, protecting your youngest as their husband, it should suffice as a fair trade. Venelana calmly stated, a knowing smile on her face. You're confident that he'll win. Mordred laughed as it all settled in. Of course. Because you'll be there with him in that battle, Venelana said smiling. A fit of laughter broke from the blonde as she realized how much planning had been done. He's aware of this right? She asked as Venelana nodded. It was Merlin's idea originally, to build his worth until this moment. Venelana said calmly as Mordred nodded. All right then. I can't wait to see the bastard's face at the wedding then, she continued, chuckling slightly. It will be quite the night to remember, Venelana said, a small giggling fit hitting her as well. It was only a few days till the wedding between his sister and Riser. Having vanished from the house, Naruto had spent his time in self-isolation, training, practicing and perfecting his movements. It's here we find him, his eyes a crystal clear blue as his sword, hummed with a golden glow. Lifting it above his head, the sword glowed brightly and when swung, released a golden beam with a red core. The sword itself has small cracks across the blade revealing a glowing gold underneath the darkness. Collapsing to the ground, his sword vanishing in black wisps, he hit the ground with a thud as sweat covered his body. Raising his head, he smiled as he noticed a large crater in front of him from his swing. It's slowly coming back to me, he muttered in between pants and rolled himself onto his back as rain started to blanket the area. Closing his eyes, the man simply allowed the water to cool his body as he drifted off to sleep. His body tired from the constant training it had been exposed to. Footsteps echoed throughout the clearing as someone walked into it. The hooded being's gaze wandering around until it came to a stop on the sleeping boy. Walking over to him, the hooded being reached down with a silver arm, which rested on the boy's shoulder. Passed out from exhaustion, how far has this one boy pushed himself? He asked, his gaze turning to the crater near him. Looking back down at the sleeping boy, 
he picked him up and decided to move him under shelter, finding a large tree with enough leaves to keep the boy at least semi-dry. Laying him down, his gaze fell on the boy's face as he remembered the words of his king's self-proclaimed caretaker. Blonde hair, pale skin, and blue eyes, he muttered to himself, checking the boy's features gently enough to not disturb him from his slumber. I have spent the past ten years wandering the globe, only briefly getting hints to where you may have been but finally my journey has come to an end. Sitting himself down next to the boy, the hooded man turned his gaze to the skies as his hood fell down, the water's efforts finally pushing it down. He then turned to gaze at the sleepy boy, a woman with pale blonde hair and yellow eyes replacing him. I will not fail you again milady. Once this boy is ready, I shall stand by his side till the very end. The man pledged to the heavens above as he removed a silver cloak that sat over his left arm and covered the boy's chest with it. Leaving the clearing in silence, the man continued on his trip, now returning to where he once came from. Hours later, awakening to the sounds of crickets in his ears, Naruto opened his eyes and looked around in confusion, his hands grasping the white cloak in his hands as he stood to his feet. I must have fallen asleep, but who brought me to this tree? He asked himself in wonder. Shaking the thoughts off for now, he created a teleportation circle to return himself home, fully prepared for the multiple questions and reprimands he will be receiving from his sister-in-law. Almost as if predicting the future, the moment he appeared within the grammary compound, Graphia was standing in front of him. The same stoic face she usually wore on full display as Naruto knew something was wrong. Now that you've returned, I want to ask you something Naruto. Turning around, Naruto was greeted by his older brother standing behind him, a scheming smile on his face. And what might that be, Sirzex? Naruto asked, his arms crossing in confusion. What are your thoughts on Issei attempting to stop the marriage? Laughing at his brother's insinuation, Naruto continued to laugh until he calmed down. Issei of all people. Dear brother, I think you may have gone insane in all your years as Lucifer. He chuckled out as the eldest of Venelina's children shook his head. I know you don't speak your true thoughts Naruto. Sighing at his brother's words, Naruto's mood turned serious. If Issei had some help and some way to counter Riser and his peerage then I believe he could be of some use. Walking away from his brother, Naruto stopped in his steps, his gaze turning back to the two. With some training. He could be quite powerful. And curving his habits. With his peace said, Naruto left the two older devils to think on their plan of attack. Upon arriving in his room, he was greeted by his mother waiting on his bed, gently knitting a sweater. Her gaze turned from her free time activity to her son with a serene smile. How did your training go? She asked, receiving a playful smile from him. Had I been someone else, I admit, I would possibly have trouble against him. But unfortunately for Riser, I'm in top condition and I'm ready for him. Hearing the confidence in his voice, his mother nodded, her smile never once leaving her face. You remember the stipulation if you lose right? She asked, earning a nod from the blonde. Like Rias I will be married off, possibly creating an army of devils with enough resistance to holy magic that we could possibly assault heaven. If we were to ever break our pact with them. Nodding at the grim implications her son suggested. Benelana stood to her feet. So I have complete trust that you, for your sister's sake, and your own, you will destroy Riser, and break down the wall of arrogance that makes up the boy's very being. Holding her adopted son to her chest, the woman gently stroked the back of his head. Naruto simply relaxed into the woman's grasp, his eyes closing in content within the brown haired mother's bosom. Holding the boy close, she gently sat down on the bed, dragging him with her until her back hit the covers. Rolling over, with Naruto following her movements, the two laid on the bed with the mother's eyes closing gently. Her mind drifts off to sweet dreams of happiness with her family. The next day, after awakening within his mother's grasp, Naruto gently pulled himself free and gently got off the bed, trying not to disturb his mother's beauty sleep. Exiting the room quietly after getting dressed, Naruto wandered down to the kitchen, grabbing an apple as he wandered around the home, eventually coming across photos of his family. A magic circle appeared underneath him as he was reflecting on his brother's words from the previous night. Teleporting to his sister's club room, he was happy to find all her pieces sitting around. The only thing killing his mood was the fact each of them were lost in their own thoughts. You know, arriving here I expected to be greeted at least with a single smile. He started, the group turning to him with Issei stepping up to him quickly. Where the hell have you been, you bastard? Issei raged, grabbing Naruto by the front of his shirt. I've been training, which is what I expected all of you to be doing as well. Tearing the weaker pawn's hand away from his shirt, Naruto's gaze turned to the whole group. Instead of sitting around while Rias is forced to sit through being groomed to be the bastard's wife, why were none of you training? He asked, silence greeting him. Especially you Issei, 
I expected you to be training your ass off in order to save her. I do want to save her, he retorted, a small smile coming across Naruto's face. There's the conviction I know. All right Issei here's the plan. I need you to be a meat shield against Riser while Mordred and I finish him off. Looking at the blonde like he was crazy Naruto decided he may need to elaborate. My brother asked me yesterday if I believed you could be useful in stopping Riser. I lied to him saying that you're nothing but dead weight, I believe that you might be the key to defeating him. Do you really think the pervert could be that useful? The sharp-tongued Kaneko cut in, getting a nod from Naruto. The biggest reason is that Riser will underestimate him again seeing as he already defeated Issei before, so he'll believe he can easily do it again. He started, pulling out a piece of paper and handing it to Issei. Here's an invite to the wedding, I think mom had the same thought as Sears X as she snuck it into my pocket last night knowing which pants I'd be using today. Handing the brown-haired pervert, Naruto left the room with a wave over his shoulder and returned home. Deciding to rest for the day, Naruto went to the family library and sat down to read some of his favorite books from his childhood. His day faded away until Grafia walked into the room carrying a tray of tea. Taking the cup offered to him with a smile, Naruto continued to read the book currently in his hands until Grafia pulled his attention away. Issei-sama appeared in your brother's office earlier, apparently he found a summoning circle on the bottom of the invitation and met with him. The two seemed to hit it off and have devised a plan for Issei to interfere with the wedding tomorrow. Shutting his book with a sigh, Naruto placed his teacup down and leaned forward. Grafia, are you aware of what mother's plans are for the wedding? He asked, getting a shake of disagreement from her. It's a double or nothing bet. The last child of Lady Phoenix will marry the last child of Lady Gramary. Taking a second to register his words, a small look of shock came across her face as she stared at Naruto. So what you mean to say is, Riser and I will battle, and if he beats me but some unholy intervention, I will be married off to Revel Phoenix. My Excalibur will belong to the Phoenix family. Cutting her off and standing to his feet, Naruto gave the maid a smile. But that's only if I lose. Which I have no intention of doing. Leaving the room, he missed the smile she gave him as she stared at his back. Of course you won't. Your pride won't allow you to be beaten by those beneath you. And even then, that sword gives you the biggest advantage over him that anyone could wish for. Rolling up her sleeve slightly, she was greeted to the beginning of a scar. After all, I've taken the attack from it and didn't leave unscathed. Covering her arm once again, she cleaned up the room, placing the book titled, The Little Mermaid Back, where she knew Naruto always placed it. The day of the wedding, standing in the living room was Naruto and Mordred, foregoing the suit and tie they both wore to occasions such as these, both in their armor and cleaning their blades. While it may have been a joyous day for someone like Riser, the two had been preparing for this day since the beginning. All the constant training, all the injuries, all boiled down to their fight with Riser. Think you can handle his pieces? Naruto asked, the cracks littering his sword glowing slightly. You're sure that he won't just fight you like a man? Mordred asked, heaving Clarent over her shoulder. Riser isn't the type of person to take a challenge with no way of winning, he doesn't know enough about us so he'd rather sit back and let his peerage deal with everything while he studies us. Naruto answered, his sword vanishing. Let's hope he's arrogant enough to actually accept it. I can't say much but I think he'll accept just for the sake of keeping his sister safe. Arrogant as he is, I think he still holds her safety above all. Nodding at Mordred's thoughts, Naruto noticed a summoning circle appear underneath them. Showtime. His helmet forming around his head, the yellow eye protectors forming as Mordred's silver helm rebuilt itself. The two stood proudly together as they were transported to the room where the wedding was taking place. With Venelana, now I thank all of you for giving me your attention. I wish to bring attention to a deal I struck with Lady Phoenix not too long after I brought another child into my family. Venelana started, getting everyone's attention, all thinking she managed to hide being pregnant from them. Should there be an unfair stipulation during the first raiding game between my daughter and Riser, a second will be held. Should my chosen two lose, my son shall be married to Lady Ravel after her brother marries Rias. Should he win on the other hand, Lord Riser will owe my son three favors and Naruto and Ravel have choices upon who they shall marry and cannot be forced into anything. The crowd started muttering amongst themselves, each wondering if this was just a way to get out of a marriage, or to abuse their power. With a summoning circle appearing next to her, Naruto and Mordred appeared, the two moving to stand on either side as Naruto stared down Riser. A scowl hidden behind his black helm. Don't you just look beautiful dear sister? Naruto started before his gaze drifted to Riser and you're still just as much as an arrogant prick. Growling at the insult, Riser stepped forward only for Venelana to stop him. Tell me Lady Gramary, why should I accept this deal made between my mother and yourself? He asked as Naruto's armor faded from his body, 
only a crown remaining on his head giving the appearance of horns protruding from his skull. And I thought that you would love the idea of your sister being protected from any demon trying to get their hands on her. Naruto mocked, his gaze turning to the younger blonde as he offered her a slight smile. And you think you can do that? A weakling like you? Riser taunted, getting in Naruto's face, which never lost its calm demeanor. Better than you ever could burnt pecker. Mordred's armor could be heard rattling as she tried to hold in her laughter thanks to Naruto's response. As amusing as this is, Naruto would you mind if I brought the Red Dragon Emperor into your little spat with Riser for some. Halftime entertainment. Sears X cut in separating the two before it turned violent. I'm perfectly fine with Issei joining us in this fight. Are you? Turning the question to Riser who scoffed. His pride on the line as the man in front of him didn't back down. Fine. If you wish for your group of three to be crushed by my power and I'll take your challenge. But in response to your group, my rooks and knights will also be participating then, but you are mine. He threatened Naruto, smiling as everything went to plan. Turning to the crowd, Naruto decided it might be fun to hype the battle up just a tiny bit as Issei was dragged in by Sears X. Place your bets one and all for this once in a lifetime event. The Red Dragon Emperor unites with the blood of Pendragon in order to face the Phoenix Heir for the hand of Rias Gremory. Watch and be amazed as I promise that this fight shall not bore you. Bowing as the group was transferred to where the fight was taking place Naruto turned to Mordred who nodded and grabbed Issei by his collar. You're with me String Bean. Leave the burnt pecker to Naruto. We've got our own problems to deal with. She muttered, dragging the brown-haired pervert off to the side where four pieces of Riser's peerage awaited them, having been dragged into the battle to secure Riser's victory. Alright so which one of you want to get your asses handed to them? She laughed, pointing Claren towards them. Stepping up first was a woman with bright green eyes and brown hair. Her combat attire consisted of a western knight and eastern samurai, having added shoulder guards and hip plates to her knight look for extra protection. Something that Mordred scoffed at, knowing the girl was looking to show off her body more than anything. The brown-haired girl replied in kind, pointing her broadsword at Mordred. You're awfully cocky for someone of a lower status. We belong to Riser Sama's peerage and will not be defeated by some weakling like you. She declared bringing her sword to her shoulder but you are respectful enough to wish to face us without any hidden tactics. I will commend you for that. Looking at his fighting partner in concern, Issei was floored to see her start walking forward, her armor clanking as she kept silent in her approach. I'm going to wipe the floor with you, she muttered, stomping hard enough to crack the ground beneath her as red lightning started to spark around her. Hyodo, you take the rooks, I'll be there to help when I can. She ordered, getting a nod from the boy who got into a boxing stance, his sacred gear appearing. Swinging Claire and around, she heard it clash with metal before sending her opponent flying away. Riser's other knight had tried to attack her from behind, but due to her constant training she heard the footsteps approaching from behind and managed to counter her. Looking to her left, having spun around to send her opponent flying, she saw a woman with black hair with tints of blue getting up from the ground. Her hair was done in five thin ponytails going around her head all held together but a golden accessory. A modified Changsong was what covered her body with red shorts and armored boots with matching gauntlets. Cyrus, are you okay? Carlamine asked, looking over to her teammate who had gotten back to her feet. Don't worry about me, focus on winning this battle for Riser Sama. She growled, shaking off the dizziness from Mordred's blow. TCH, I can't believe all of you go out of your way to try and get that asshole's attention. Mordred started, tapping Clarent on her shoulder in annoyance. Oh well. I'll just have to beat some sense into you. Rushing the broadsword user, she quickly attacked, forcing the brown haired woman onto defense before her concentration was broken as Mordred drove an armored knee into her stomach. Switching hands, Mordred backhanded the girl away before throwing her sword towards her other opponent, catching her off guard. Deflecting the flying sword, she was unprepared for the vicious stomach blow which winded her easily before she found her face grabbed tightly and dragged down to the ground. Flesh met concrete violently before Mordred kicked her in the gut. Hearing Carlamine roaring as she approached, she grabbed the one currently groveling on the ground by the leg and spun around. Using the other girl as a bat, slamming her into Carlamine's unprepared side. Sending both girls to the ground, Mordred decided to switch toys picking Carlamine up and easily ragdolling her, slamming her onto her back and then onto her friend's collapsed body as though she was a tree branch. When she was done, she backed away, moving to grab Clarent, which laid embedded in the ground her helmet undoing itself as she turned to face the two easily beaten bodies. Her sword starting to crackle with the energy that had appeared earlier, was raised high into the sky. It suddenly became more violent as crimson lightning struck the ground around her and surrounded her before she swung towards her opponents. The two were sent flying, 
electricity covering their body as the groggily moaned in pain, their bodies collapsed on top of each other. Turning towards Issei, she was quite surprised to see him actually holding up against Riser's rooks, dodging through their attacks and getting a few lucky hits in. One being a solid uppercut which stunned Riser's rook Isabella. She staggered back before Issei rushed forward and delivered another solid punch to her face, sending her to the ground. The masked girl got to her knees in shock. While the masked girl was wondering how Issei managed to land enough blows on her to rattle her very being, Issei was rushed by Shuelin. Mordred couldn't help but smirk under her helm as she watched Issei dodge and weave through the kung fu specialist's attacks and winced when she saw him nail the girl with his gauntleted hand, sending her to the ground. Noticing a red orb, Mordred couldn't help but cheer as Issei fired his signature technique, the dragon shot, straight at the ground sending the two rooks flying away from the blast. Hearing footsteps behind her, Mordred ducked to the side as Cyrus' greatsword hit the ground she previously stood at. Grabbing the girl by her ponytails Mordred pulled back violently, the girl grunting in pain before she fell back, the pain in her scalp now gone. Looking towards the armored knight, she was met by her own hair smacking her in the face. What's wrong girly, upset now that I gave you a haircut? Mordred asked, stomping on the girl's chest. None of you were ready to fight us. Naruto and I have been training for quite some time and even Hayudo has done what he could in this fight. Looking over to the panting team, she received a thumbs up as he was doubled over, catching his breath. Looking behind her, Mordred watched as Carlamine approached her, the girl's sword held at her waist in defiance as Mordred took her foot off of Cyrus' chest. What are you gonna do with that? Poke me, try and stab me, Mordred mocked, walking towards the knight whose legs trembled slightly as the silver armored monstrosity that is Mordred approached her. I will defeat you, you're nothing compared to Riser Sama, Carlamine said trying to psych herself up and lifted up her arms to strike Mordred. Raising her hand, Mordred caught the girl's arms and reared her armored head back and lunged forward. A sickening crunch heard as metal met flesh and cartilage. The girl dropping her knees with her sword clanging on the ground. Her arms, still in Mordred's grasp, were raised up before receiving a vicious hook to her gut and then being booted back. Getting to her feet, Cyrus tried to attack Mordred from behind only to find herself restrained in a full Nelson hold by Issei turning around as her helmet came undone, showing her face to the two, her blonde ponytail flowing freely as she grabbed Cyrus by the jaw with an armored hand. That wasn't very nice of you, to try and attack me like that. Mordred strained, her other hand clenching and then with impressive force that made Issei jump slightly, nailed the knight in the face, knocking some teeth out. You arrogant, little, pieces of shit. She gritted out, each insult being nailed with another punch. Should learn, who you don't, fuck with. Grabbing the girl's head and bringing it down, her knee going up, a violent smack was heard as the girl reared back, Issei letting go as she backed away. His fists clenching in frustration, lunged forward, punching the girl to the ground before following her down, grabbing her and violently lashing out, getting a raised brow from Naruto as he continued to spectate the fight. In the corner of his eye, he noticed an irritated Riser getting ready to step in. Now now Riser. I'm your opponent. Whatever happens to your pieces is their own fault. Naruto taunted, scratching at his jaw with his unoccupied hand, the other holding his sword by the blade. Shut up you filthy dog! Riser nearly screamed, restraining him only just as he saw the smile on his face. And just like that I can see how far you were before snapping. Oh well. Mordred. Issei. Naruto called, getting the two's attention. Seeing Naruto raise his free hand to his throat, Naruto made a motion, slitting his throat in silence with a smile. Pulling Issei off of the girl, she grabbed her and pulled her to her feet and threw her over to the others. The group of four, struggling to get to their feet, as Mordred pushed Issei behind her. I would stand back if I was you. If you got caught in this, I don't think you would be happy with me. Mordred warned, raising Clarent in his hands with the sword opening at the base as red lightning arched over both her and the sword. It's for some overkill, she cheered, raising her sword above her head with a feral grin. I say this, not as a king, but as a loyal knight. Anyone who dares to deny my king's peace shall be crushed beneath my heel. Clarent Blood Arthur. She roared, swinging down with a bright crimson beam enveloping their opponents and removing them from the battle. Riser looked on in anger and disbelief at the bright red beam that flew into the sky. That Hiodo is how you take out your opponents. She panted out, walking over allowing him to get his first proper look at her. His eyes widened in shock, never expecting Mordred to be a woman. You are. Dot the most badass and amazing girl I've ever met. He mumbled out, getting a chuckle from the blonde haired sword wielder. You're damn right I am. Looking towards Naruto with a smug smile, she got a small smile in response as he stood to his feet. Looks like it's the end. 
Hope you're ready for a fun show, Hyoto. She said calmly as Issei stared at the two fighters. He's going to fight Riser alone? Issei asked, afraid for someone he considered close to him. Issei, Naruto has been training for this day since the beginning. If there is anyone who can win this fight, it's him. Hearing the confidence in her voice, Issei nodded slowly. If Naruto trusted Mordred enough to handle the peerage by herself, then he should believe in him fighting just Riser. Well now Riser, what happened to all that bravado you had coming into this? Naruto mocked, holding his sword in his armored left hand. Even if my pieces were defeated there is no way in hell that I will lose to the likes of you. Riser growled, flames covering his hands. In response, Naruto grabbed his sword's hilt. A dark aura appearing around the blade sent Riser to the air as Naruto swung the sword, an arc of energy slicing things far behind him. You dodged that quite well, unfortunately for you though, distance is an easy fix. Naruto roared, his sword burning to life as he swung upwards, digging into the ground and sending rubble flying as Riser was forced to dodge the blade's extended range. Launching a ball of flames at Naruto, who retaliated by cutting it in half and launching himself into the air. Trying to maintain a safe distance was Riser's strategy, to weaken Naruto from afar and strike him at his weakest point. Landing on the ground, he gathered his strongest attack into his hands and launched it at Naruto, the blonde smiling as he rushed forward, his sword poised to pierce through the flames. A cone of black, purple and red energy with tints of gold covering his form collided with the center of Riser's attack and pushed straight through. Upon reaching the boy, Naruto swung up, slashing Riser across the chest who backed away in pain. Looking down at the wound, he felt a strange aura that horrified him. Is that a holy weapon? He asked in shock, Naruto smiling with such cruelty he worried Issei as he approached Riser. That's right Riser, I knew you'd take this fight without doing research on how I battle. I knew that the easiest way to beat you, would be to hide as much information as I could. He said approaching the down devil who tried to take to the air only to be caught by Naruto slashing downwards, sending him to the ground. Launching a quick fireball at Naruto, catching him off guard by his recovery speed, Naruto lost his grip on the sword, sending it flying away. Feigning shock as he stared at his weapon flying from his grasp, his knuckles clenched in his left hand, the armor bending with strain before Naruto swung around. Barely outspacing Riser and managing to land a solid hook on his face. The elder blonde hit the ground with a bounce that Naruto took advantage of. Swinging his right foot up and kicking him in the gut with a resounding thud. As Riser's body floated upwards, his head was grabbed and then slammed into the ground, the concrete of the arena shattering before he was thrown away with ease. His body landing in a slump, Riser attempted to get to his feet, blood pouring from the wounds on his forehead. Turning his back on Riser, Naruto moved to retrieve his sword with a calm step. His hand reaching for the sword's hilt was paused as he moved his head to the side, dodging a wild fireball with a smirk, filled with the same arrogance that Riser had. Naruto turned towards him, drawing the sword from the ground. How pathetic, all that bravado gone within an instant. You were never going to win against me, Riser. Hearing his words destroyed the Phoenix's pride in a way that sent him over the edge of anger. Standing to his feet with flames covering his body. Naruto. He's just toying with Riser. Issei started, not believing his eyes as the two fighters attacked each other again. Naruto made it seem like he was battling a newborn child, and Riser, being driven by his anger more and more, continued to fall into his trap. Drive your opponents mad so that they make obvious mistakes, and mock them to continue their rage. Simple but effective, especially against someone like Riser. Mordred said, watching from next to the reincarnated devil. Her eyes were drawn to the ground as black orbs started to flow upwards around them. What's going on? Issei asked stunned as he noticed the orbs seemed to converge on Naruto's blade as he brought the sword to his waist. He's gathering all the negative energy in the area into his sword and is planning on using it on Riser. Mordred explained. Issei took a step forward, his boosted gear glowing brightly as his scale mail covered his body. He's wide open. He screamed in worry before taking off, Mordred letting him go with a smile. You go kid, she muttered quietly as she noticed Riser gather all the energy he could into a single attack. Getting in front of Naruto, shielding himself from the attack, Issei stood in defiance against Riser, drawing more anger from the Phoenix air. Ever since you started, I was waiting to back you up. But seeing you toy with Riser as if he was nothing, you will win this without taking even a scratch, I will make sure of that. Feeling his power rise, Naruto closed his eyes as the blast engulfed him and Issei. Mordred staring in slight worry before the flames were swallowed by darkness. It slowly moved around before being absorbed into the sword, its size growing as Naruto stood in front of Issei, a smile filled with pride on his face. 
Though I overlooked you in this fight, knowing you were only meant to distract the others until Mordred finished her fight, I have to say I am amazed that you would go out of your way to try and save me, and even fight as hard as you did against your opponents. Stand back and watch Issei, for you have the first class seat, and my blessing to win my sister's heart. Naruto declared, his sword exploding, sending wisps of energy flying as he took a step forward. His sword swinging upwards with a chant of victory. Let this vile king's decree be heard by all. Swallow the light of those who oppose me and show me the blinding golden light of victory that was engulfed by darkness. Escalibur Morgan. Riser only had time to register the purple, black and crimson beam as it struck him with full force. The power behind it, annihilating part of the arena that they were all fighting in before the blast that swallowed Riser grew in size and exploded, expanding outwards and shooting to the sky, a pillar of destruction swallowing everything as the onlookers stared in shock. And with that attack swallowing Riser whole, the battle was over. Rias Grimori was saved from her marriage, and the darkness of the Pendragon blood was revealed to be standing amongst them. Main room with the others. Returning with his head held high, Naruto's sword vanished as Rias walked over to him. Issei standing nearby, still in shock at what he saw just before. Just how long have you been hiding that? She asked, eyes widened in shock as Naruto chuckled. Since the very beginning dear sister, information gathering is a nice strength to have. Naruto admitted, grabbing his sister by the shoulder. Now, go and give your pawn a nice reward for doing his best. All but ordering his sister, he pushed her towards Issei as he turned to the smiling gaze of his mother. Bowing his head slightly, his gaze was turned towards the Phoenix family and a wounded riser on the ground. Walking over with his hands in his pockets, Naruto was stopped as the remains of riser's peerage stepped in front of him. I just want to give riser a few words of wisdom. Nothing violent, Naruto started, easing his way towards riser with closed eyes. Come to gloat and lord your victory over me have you? Riser bit back spitefully, glaring at the pale-skinned blonde who reached a hand towards him. You put up a good fight Riser. I was just more prepared for this than you. Naruto answered, shaking his hand in front of Riser's face. You fought hard and for a good reason. I knew if your sister was put on the line, that you would face me with everything you had. After all, I'm the same way when it comes to Rias. Naruto started, Riser staring at the outstretched hand. Now shake my hand and we'll call this my win. And why not the next one as well? Naruto taunted, Riser smirking at his words, shakily stood to his feet and grasped Naruto's hands roughly. Touch my sister and I kill you. Riser threatened, which only got a chuckle from Naruto as they shook hands. What happens is dependent on her. Naruto admitted staring at the shorter blonde. If you want to at least try, you know how to contact me. Naruto finished, turning around and walking off. Get stronger Riser. Kicking Issei's ass gets boring real quick. Smiling at his words, Riser retreated quietly, not to lick his wounds, but to actually think about how he acted and the blonde who treated himself as an equal. As Naruto returned to the cheering members of Rias Peerage, Mordred standing with him, her face set in the usual cocky smile. He laughed with the group before all went silent, as the others turned to see Rias and Issei kissing each other happily. Won the fight and got the girl. Good job Issei. Naruto thought to himself as he soon joined the festivities and started partying with his sister's peerage before turning in for the night. Meanwhile in Britain, Merlin had been watching the fight between the groups over a crystal ball that sat in the ground in front of her. A smile on her face as she noticed the change in Naruto's sword. So he bears the blackened Escalibur does he? The voice of a younger girl asked from behind Merlin, who shook her head. As blackened as it is now, it can become pure once more. There are two sides to every coin after all. Merlin answered, the girl walking into the Mage of Flowers view to stare at the crystal ball. Long blonde hair reaching her mid-back, a black form-fitting dress with blue accents that left her navel and abdomen exposed to the world and a black veil, hiding her face from the world. Looking her over, Merlin knew this girl could easily control the hearts of many men with ease. Though, looking past the veil she found a glint of care and love within the emerald green eyes the girl held. As if she was a teen having fallen in love at first sight. Not too much longer and we'll be meeting soon. Naruto, the girl muttered to herself happily as she stared into the ball, noting the smiling face of the pale blonde as he interacted with the other people around him. At the same time somewhere else, a woman sat alone on a golden throne, light from the moon shining into her room from a hole in the roof, giving her an ethereal beauty. Her blonde hair glinting in the light as she was roused from her sleep. A smile came to her face as ruby red eyes opened and stared into the sky. Her golden armor gleaming in the light as a black long-sleeved shirt covered her body, but was caught on the bottom of her bosom, leaving her midriff in view of all those around her, displaying triangular tattoos which worked their way up. 
Resting her cheek on her armored fist, a playful smirk came into view. Whoever holds such an interesting treasure should not be allowed to live. She muttered to herself, the smirk turning into a hatred-filled snarl as she stood to her feet. All treasure of this world belongs to me and as such only I am allowed to possess it, no one else is to be my equal. Walking away from her throne towards a balcony, the girl stared into the stars above and couldn't help but let out a laugh that was music to the ears of those listening, but did nothing to hide her arrogance and pride. Some mongrels just continue to make things in this world. Days after the nullification of his sister's marriage, Naruto had decided to take it easy. His days had slowed down to a boring crawl. Everything seemed to be dragging on more, the only solace he found with it was spending more time with his nephew Milikas. The boy was the one of the only people Naruto couldn't stay mad at. The others being his mother and Graphia. But here Naruto is, alone in his room within the Grimori Manor, leaning against a window sill as he stared into the sky. Sighing to himself, he was unaware as a dark blue magical circle appeared in the center of the room releasing a gentle black mist. Standing to his feet and walking to the bed, Naruto paused as he noticed his room was now pitch black, the candles he left alight at his bedside had been snuffed out and the windows blackened. Turning back to where he was sitting, he watched as the window closed and locked itself. Seeing no signs of Merling toying with him, Naruto called upon his sword and slowly backed away. His eyes searching the darkness and finding nothing, instincts kicking in, he swung behind him, striking only the air as his friendly neighborhood succubus appeared behind him with a giggle. If I knew you were gonna be swinging a sword at me, I would have come prepared, unfortunately all I came in this time was nothing but a robe, the mage purred as she pushed Naruto towards the bed. A hungry smile on her face as she advanced on the young heir. A slight blush came across his face as Naruto took in Merlin's erotic appearance. Her long white hair seemed to glow in the darkness of the night as those pink eyes showed nothing but love and lust within them. Feeling her place a hand under his chin, he felt the slight wetness which showed the chances where High Merlin had just gotten out of the shower upon entering the room. His eyes closing in acceptance at the woman's advances, he felt sleep take a hold of him after their lips meet, a sultry chuckle leaving her lips as the future king drifted off into a peaceful slumber. Pulling back, Merlin gazed at his face a little longer before looking around. Noticing no one coming to the room, she smiled and licked her lips. Well, it's not like anyone is going to stop me really. She mused to herself only for her confidence to disappear when a magical circle appeared under and for Naruto to be absorbed into it. Falling to the bed and blinking in shock. Did, did she just cock block me? She yelled, completely stunned at the events of what happened. Crying to herself silently, she crawled into the bed, upset that she was unable to have even the slightest bit of fun before the plan was put into motion. The next morning, as Naruto awoke from his slumber he noticed a multitude of things that were different from his usual bed. The lack of body heat from a certain succubus was one of them. As he tried to gather his thoughts, he noticed a lingering numbness within his head, most likely from Merlin's doing involving a spell. Allowing his eyes to become fully accustomed to the dimly lit room he was within, he was surprised to find a candle nearing its end, somehow illuminating the room from its place next to the bed. His vision of the room blurry due to a silvery veil surrounding the softest bed he had been laying on. Rolling over slightly, he found himself intrigued as a gentle humming started, and the familiar warmth of someone under his head and the softest feeling of fingers gently tapping his scalp. Turning towards the origin of the sound, he found himself staring at the hidden face of a young woman. A short black pointed crown with azure ends held a darkened veil over her face. Looking over what he could see from his position, his eyes trailed over the lithe form of her body, idly noting the red markings above her chest and navel area. One of her hands moved from its position on his shoulder to cradle his chin, gently as if he was being treated like a porcelain doll. Good morning Naruto, it seems my lap must have been a suitable pillow for you. She gently giggled as Naruto pushed himself off her lap, the teal-colored blanket that was draped over his body sliding off with his actions as he moved to the edge of the bed. Who are you? he asked, wary of the stranger who would have held him within that position for who knows how long. I am but a humble servant to the man who wishes to rule like his ancestors once did. Answering quickly, the woman bowed her head and shifted to sit next to him, the long platinum blonde hair she kept bundled up fell down her back, gently landing on the bed behind her. So how do you know about that? He asked inching away from the one who he shared a bed with. I guess if anything, holding off on a proper introduction might not be the smartest thing for me to do. But trust me when I say that I mean you no harm. Getting to her feet and moving to stand in front of him, the girl took off her crown and placed it on a drawer behind her. Taking a moment to calm herself of the nerves that welled up within her chest, she smiled and stared Naruto down, 
her lapis-colored eyes meeting his own in a way that seemed to slow time down for the two. My name is Morgan Le Fay, disciple to the Mage of Flowers Merlin. I have been waiting for this day for quite some time, to finally be able to meet you face to face, is my biggest dream come true. Your biggest dream? He asked, confused. Yes, since Merlin took me under her wing, I have been told stories about your conviction and drive to become stronger. No matter what you faced, you fought it head on with a smile on your face. Hearing that, I wanted to meet you and as such I trained as much as I could and became as strong as I could under everything Merlin taught me, to be able to take my place as your trusted advisor as you rule over what we would like to see rebuilt and led by you one day. Looking out the window with a proud smile, Morgan gazed into the skies outside as a small silence fell between the two. So you seem to know me quite a bit thanks to Merlin but you don't seem to be very talkative about yourself. Naruto pointed out, snapping the female blonde out of her stupor. Well because unlike the stories I've heard from Merlin, there isn't really much for me to say. So for now let's just say that from this point on, I devote myself to you entirely. With a smile on her face and her taking his hands within her own, Morgan pledged herself to the man who would be her king in future. The two sat together and chatted for a small while, Morgan speaking of her hobbies and her favorite types of tea that she usually had when outside admiring the world, or inside reading a book. It seemed to him that unlike stories Merlin had told him of his ancestor and the Morgan Le Fay of that time, this one was different. Gone was the cunning and manipulative witch who sought the throne of Camelot and Mordred's mother. Now from what he could see, this was a girl who saw more beauty in a world divided. Who saw the factions as not a whole problem but each a separate problem to solve by themselves. Sitting and speaking with someone was something Naruto usually grew bored with, it's one of the reasons he would never stay long in meetings unless Venelana asked him to. But being with Morgan was different, unexplainable to him, but it was different. She offered him tea like others, but instead of rejecting it, that pure and honest smile she had on her face as she handed him the porcelain cup simply broke his resolve. Once they were finished chatting, Morgan pulled Naruto to his feet and towards the door of her room. Finding himself pushed out into a hallway followed by the sound of the door closing behind him, he was dragged through the hall by an excited Morgan who wished to introduce him to others that she had found and given a home to inside the place she called home. Where are we? Naruto asked, looking around at the decor of the halls as Morgan dragged him by the arm. It's a place that Merlin thought would be good to build for the future and one of the first projects I began to work on when she took me on as her pupil. Using my magic and the ground around the area, I've spent years transforming it from a large grassy field into something more. A place where you would be happy to stay. She calmly stated without missing a single step, not slowing down until the two reached her intended location. Large marble pillars leading down to a single throne. Red and gold was the color of such a thing that kings usually sat upon, commanding troops and dealing with the affairs of their country. A golden rack sat next to it, seemingly capable of holding only a single blade within it, no doubt to show the preferred weapon of the one who sat upon the throne. Leading to the cushioned seat was a large red carpet that went from the doorway all the way up the stairs and finishing at its base. Looking at the marble floor which seemed perfectly cleaned and up to the point it was absolutely spotless, and then turning his attention to the large crystal chandelier above him, Naruto's attention fell upon Morgan once more as she stood to the side of the throne, dusting herself off and meeting his gaze with her ever-present smile. Place seems a little gaudy don't you think? Large open room with marble pillars and a matching floor. A single throne at the very end for one person to sit upon while looking down on those he or she commands. Stained glass windows, I admit that's a nice touch to give the place color but, isn't it a bit much? He asked, walking up to to the teenage girl who shook her head, her ponytail flying about before ending over her shoulder. If I wanted it to be gaudy I would have made it out of gold. But the strain of creating it would have been far too much for me so I went with marble to make it more simple instead of having to deal with making it brightly colored, keeping it this plain white with only the smallest dash of color was much less taxing. She happily said, her smile growing when she was praised for the window despite the other inhabitants disagreeing with her choice. Taxing. Confused at her wording, Naruto couldn't help but draw her attention to the use of the word. What do you mean by that? Did you already forget what I said earlier? Admittedly it was more of an off-handed response that I gave but since you seem to have already forgotten. This palace, this throne room, everything around you was created by my own hands when Merlin took me on as her apprentice. Morgan explained, looking at her handiwork with a smile as she turned her attention towards the door. It hopefully won't take long before one of the others shows up, so until that time, why don't you take a seat? Asking hopefully, happiness clear in those shining blue eyes of hers that instantly destroyed any chance of Naruto saying no. 
Walking up to, to the throne and seeing her bouncing on her heels, Naruto gave a little shrug before sitting down on the seat crafted for him. The cushion gave way as Naruto slowly sank into the material with a content groan. Placing all his weight on the back with a smile, Naruto crossed one leg over the other and turned to stare at Morgan. Good job on the work with this thing, he praised as Morgan nodded. I based the creation of it off of more Middle Ages just to keep the aesthetic going within the castle and the knights that serve you. And hopefully said knights should be arriving at any moment now. Looking at the door expectantly, Morgan started to tap her foot in irritation as the door did not open or budge. The two teens continued to stare and stare, Morgan's tapping growing louder and louder before stomping to the door quickly. Reaching for the handle she was unprepared for the door to fly open, connecting with her face and sending her to the ground holding her nose in pain. Please excuse my lateness but I was preoccupied with another tea lady Morgan, what are you doing on the floor? A voice asked the beautiful girl who looked at the owner with tears in her eyes. I was about to open the door but then someone rudely opened it in my face, Bedivere. She exclaimed, causing the man to panic and bow in forgiveness. I'm sorry for my insolence Lady Morgan, I should have arrived here sooner. Raising himself from his position, he turned his attention to the throne Naruto sat upon and moved to kneel in front of him. Allow me to properly introduce myself seeing as I couldn't the last time we met, you were unconscious and I did not wish to disturb your rest. Raising his head with a smile, Naruto took a moment to take in the look of the man standing before him. Long straight silver hair that stopped at the base of his neck with striking emerald green eyes that gazed at him with tender care like that of an older brother figure. Something Naruto had only truly felt he had gotten from Grafia on her days off when the two spent the day together enjoying themselves. I am Bedivere, I once served as the steward to a royal family long ago, now I am merely a shadow of my former self, here to serve you and Lady Morgan till the day my life is snuffed out. Hearing the sadness within the man's voice caused a frown to form on Naruto's face as Morgan's head dipped slightly. Sir Bedivere, Naruto started slowly in order to get the man's attention. There is no reason for you to look at life the way you do. Having your support is more than enough for Morgan and myself. As such from this point on, I wish not to hear such a depressing tone from you. Nodding his head slowly, any further discussion was halted as the door was opened once again and a head of pink hair slowly peeked inside. Glasses and lavender eyes greeted Naruto with shy intent as the girl slowly entered the room, closing the door behind her and walking forward. A grey open hoodie with a black dress and a red tie greeted his vision. Covering her legs were black stockings with brown boots. The girl messed with her bangs a little bit before she smiled. Sorry for being late Morgan, I was looking for Papa but I couldn't find him anywhere. Anyway, Mashu Kairi Light reporting. The girl introduced herself with a bow. It's nice to meet you Mashu, I'm Naruto. I hope we can get along in the near future. I hope so too. Seeing the two happily interact like it was nothing brought a smile on Bedivere's face as he watched Mashu talk with Naruto. His smile became much larger when he noticed Morgan insert herself into the conversation, her attention split between the two but more focused on the blue-eyed teen. Shaking his head and excusing himself, Bedivere set out to complete a simple task for his new lord. A cup of tea and some snacks to tide them over until a proper meal can be prepared. As the man became engrossed with his task, he ignored the sound of a door being opened as someone entered the kitchen. As the silver-haired knight finished his tray, he turned around to see Naruto standing behind him with a slight smile. Walking over to what was prepared for him, Bedivere was forced to stand to the side as Naruto poured himself a cup of tea. This was finely brewed Bedivere. Wonderfully done. Praise from the young man made a bubbly feeling within Bedivere's chest appear. Nodding his head happily, Bedivere stayed behind Naruto as the blonde drank the tea that was made and ate his snacks happily. As Naruto approached the kitchen sink with the dirty dishes in hand, Bedivere made a motion to stop only to pause as Naruto gently raised a hand in response to his knight's movements. Bedivere please, I see no need in having you cater to my every whim, even going as far as to clean my own dishes for me. I may be the one you see as king, but I refuse to be treated like such. But, no but is my final decision. If you wish to serve me then I'm fine with that, but if you must serve me, then it shall be as my aid, the one who stands at my side and helps guide me like you once did for my ancestor. Speaking with as much seriousness as he could muster, Naruto led the silver-haired knight out of the room and walked side by side with him. Sir, Bedivere please feel free to drop the honorifics. At his majesty's words, Bedivere fell silent, quietly walking alongside him until the two arrived in a training ground outside where they found Morgan and Mashu. The latter now carries a giant shield at her side and is currently defending against the younger mage's magic. 
A particularly strong strike from behind sent the lavender-haired girl bouncing across the ground before she quickly got back to her feet and blocked a large blast of magic. The energy flew past Mashu as a defensive barrier formed in front of her, protecting her from the powerful blast. As Morgan lowered her hand Mashu advanced. Pushing forward with her shield in front of her, she spun around to block a large magical construct in the form of a blade which crashed heavily against the girl's shield. Being pushed back, the pink-haired girl used the moment to slam the bottom of her shield into the ground before flipping over it to not only dodge a wave of magic that was aimed at her legs, but to close the distance before attempting to slam her shield onto Morgan. Jumping back and waving a large ebony staff with azure highlights, a large magical circle appeared below Mashu before exploding, sending smoke and debris flying everywhere. Willing her staff to disappear in a flash, Morgan walked towards the smoke screen and cleared it with a single swipe of her hand. When the smoke was cleared, Naruto was greeted to the sign of Mashu pushing herself up with help from her shield. Walking over to the two girls, Naruto and Bedivere clapped in praise for the demonstration of their abilities. Wielding a shield of that size is quite surprising to me, Mashu. I never would have expected such a weapon to belong to a more delicate looking person. And Morgan, I see Merlin trained you well in terms of magic abilities. I thank you for the kind words Naruto. Bowing her head, Morgan hid the giddy smile that came over her face for a moment before composing herself. Standing at full attention both girls were extremely happy to receive praise from the person Merlin had spoken about constantly. To them, Naruto was painted in the image of a strong king well versed in the ways of the world but in reality that was just how Merlin wanted them to see him. Only hearing the praise left the girls unaware of the reality behind their new king. Looking out towards the sky, Bedivere turned his attention to the group and with a cough, quickly drew the attention of the three teenagers. I believe that we should possibly return to the throne room. If we continue to waste time outside standing around then there is a good chance that we will miss the others if they have returned yet. Hearing his words, Naruto nodded before turning around without a single word being uttered and started the small trek back to his throne. Bedivere followed after the boy without a second thought leaving the two girls to trail behind him, the two desperate not to be left behind. As the small group of four entered the hall, with Naruto making his way to the throne, they were unaware of a golden shimmer that appeared behind them aimed directly at his back. As he climbed the steps, Naruto stopped as he heard the rustling of chains behind him. Turning around, he was greeted to the sight of his subordinates being pinned to the ground as multiple chains held them in place. So the mongrel finally showed himself to me. An arrogant voice taunted Naruto from the location of his throne. Turning to glare at the false lord who dared to occupy what was meant to be his, Naruto was greeted to a beauty he couldn't believe existed. Long, silky, golden hair that seemed to shine with such beauty it could be considered divine. Sharp, bewitching ruby-colored eyes held in a mocking glare that showed fury, intrigue, and many other emotions that Naruto found himself lost within. Flawless, creamy skin on display covered only by a black shirt that stopped just below the girl's modest chest. Red tattoos covered the skin of her upper body, disappearing under the black shirt she wore while others crawled up the side of her belly only ever slightly drifting towards the center for a brief moment before retreating back. The girl's legs and waist were covered by golden armor with blue accents that did well to hide the aforementioned limbs from Naruto's eyes, something he deeply wished deep down wasn't the case. Covering her backside from just above her waist was a red cape made from the finest silk that looked like it would feel absolutely wonderful against human skin. Shaking his head of traitorous thoughts regarding the beauty of the goddess before him, for that was the only way he could describe the girl's beauty, Naruto straightened his back and stood to his full height, drawing a chuckle from the woman who shook her head in exasperation. Why even bother readying yourself for battle? She asked crossing those long armor-covered legs over each over before leaning her chin onto the palm of right hand which was propped up on the arm of Naruto's own throne. Because there is some random person who suddenly appeared within my throne room, occupied my throne, chained down my servants and is currently looking at me like I'm her puppy that was just caught chewing on her favorite pair of shoes. Complaining was all Naruto could do at this point as he noticed multiple golden portals appear behind the invader. The tips of swords slowly peeked through as the girl raised her free hand. Well, allow me to introduce myself to clear the air. I am Angela Uruk, the descendant of the greatest hero of all time, the golden hero Gilgamesh, and I'm here to reclaim that treasure you haven't to take over your kingdom as well while I'm at it. The now named Angela proclaimed as she slowly dropped her hand, pointing towards Naruto with a cruel and bloodthirsty smile on her face. The end. Thanks for watching. Also remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.